Hello, everyone. I'm Udayan. Uh, this is my collaborator, Tim. Today, we are presenting Laser Stacker. So here's a pair of scissors which we made with a laser cutter. The only thing that's interesting about this is that all of this was done in one go with no manual assembly. As you can see here, the scissors are fully functional and ready to use out of the laser cutter. So in this talk, I'll show you a range of objects which are fabricated using the laser stacker system. The one thing that they have all in common is that they were all made of stacked la layers of acrylic and all was done in one go with no manual assembly. A part of the secret behind the laser stacker system is to stack a bunch of acrylic sheets together, not just one. So clearly, our contribution is in the field of making 3D object from a 2D cutting process in a laser cutter. And one approach to make 3D objects with laser cutters is to use a defocused laser to bend the acrylic under gravity, like in the case of laser origami. But the more common approach is to use a software to automatically slice the object, and then the user glues them together or puts them together by manual mechanical press fit. And some people have even tried automating the process by adding a feeder and also using material which comes pre-coated with glue, like uh, in the case of laminated object manufacturing. A work with, that was presented this year at CHI integrated this into a system where they showed how to fabricate soft uh, interactive objects by layering fabric and gluing them together. So all this is great. However, there are two challenges with these approaches. They're really slow, and they require custom hardware. So it's understood in the industry that lasers can be used for fusing materials. Shouldn't it be possible for us to use laser to do both the operations, that is cutting and gluing? So the answer is yes. So this is precisely what we do with laser stacker. So by cutting and welding in a single process, we speed up the fabrication process significantly, and it requires no special hardware. So this will work on your laser cutter as well as it does on mine. So now I'll show you how to make three objects, and every time I show you the uh, process, I'll show you them with more detail. So let's start with the key underlying technique under laser stacking, which is laser welding. So here's an architectural model, model of the Hassel Plattner Institute, which is made of three layers. As you can see in the middle, there is a pool, and there are three buildings with different heights. So Ludwig, one of our collaborators, starts by putting three sheets of acrylic. In order to perform a weld between two layers, the laser first cuts all the way through the top layer and partially through the second one. And what we think is happening is the heat at the interface of the two layers melts and performs the weld, and thus bonding the two layers together. As you can see in this process, the laser cutter kind of cuts through all the layers and selectively performs the weld. And we have the final architectural model. So let's take a closer look at the weld with the architectural model. So the right part of the picture is the campus building and the left of the surplus. The welding process itself is symmetric. What this means is you end up welding not just the campus building, but also the surplus material. You can still remove the surplus by prying with a knife, but with a lot of effort, and you might even end up destroying the actual campus building. A solution to this is the technique which we came up with, which we call release, which is essentially releasing the weld on one side. This is how it works. To release the uh, undesired side of the weld, laser stacker creates a cut which is really close to the previous cut it made. The cut is so close that the material evaporates and thereby releasing the weld. So this is a snippet showing how to fabricate a robot, and the removal of the surplus material itself is so easy because of the release process. So we have seen two techniques, welding and release, and we made plenty of objects just by using these two techniques, and in fact, we made some fun objects to play with. 
Now, I showed you the scissors in the beginning. Let's look at that one more time. So the scissors have two cutting blades and an axle, and there is a rectangle which is holding the two blades together and the axle and not letting them fall apart. To give you a better view, uh, the two bottom layers constitute the blades, and there is an axle which runs through them, and it, the top layer consisting of the rectangle kind of holds them together. However, there is a problem. By, while making the axle, we have to cut through all the layers, and we end up with an undesired cut. So how can we undo this undesired cut? That takes us to the final technique, which is called healing, where the idea is to perform or uh, to undo the cut. So in the first step of healing, we perform a cut which is very close to the original, original gap. So what this does is it creates a bridge and makes the bridge fall over to the other side. And by defocusing the laser and moving the laser beam back and forth, we melt the bridge and finally heal the surface. Here we can see the first step, uh, which involves the narrow healing cut. And here's how the laser moves away to defocus and melts the bridge to uh, heal the surface. And the scissors again. So laser stacker is built on four techniques, which is cutting, welding, releasing, and healing. And our contribution with Laser Stacker is to speed up the fabrication process significantly with no custom hardware. All right. So far, we talked about technical details of the Laser Stacker. And there are details for experts like you. But to make these techniques accessible to novice users, uh, we implement a Laser Stacker editor. And using the editor, users can create functional objects without knowing all these complicated uh, technical details. So uh, we build Laser Stacker Editor as a SketchUp plugin. Uh, basically, it shares the same modeling environments and operations with SketchUp. Uh, now I will show you important UI elements using the scissor making example again. First, uh, layers. So these orange plates correspond to physical acrylic sheets. Now the user can specify the number, size, thickness, and layers uh, in the beginning of the modeling process. And we also have a layer control panel. It allows users to toggle the visibility of each layer or constrain the modeling operation within specific layers. So with layers as guys, the user use uh, standard SketchUp uh, modeling operations, such as line drawing and push and pull, to build the 3D models. Okay. So now to make the scissors functional, we need to tell the system that some blade has to be movable. And by default, laser stacker will everything together, and to make it movable, it is as easy as first select the parts. Second, we click the movable button, uh, like here. OK, so after that, laser stacker will visualize the movable parts with a different color. Now, laser stacker also provides a template database where users can import functional uh, components, such as an Excel, uh, scale it, and put that onto the scissors. So after all the modeling process, laser stack editor output two things. First, a SVG file and a laser power setting. So oftentimes, laser cutter driver offers a mapping between power setting and the colors in the SVG files. That means uh, our laser stacker can control the power setting of each cutting pass by assigning then different colors. Okay, now one more thing is that when using a laser cutter, we comes, usually we consult a power table for the power and speed setting uh, for different material with different thickness, right? But here we have a material that's stacked, uh, stacked together, and there's no such setting table anymore. 
That means we have to create one on our own. And to minimize the fabrication time, we always set the power to 100%, and we only control the cutting speed. So here, Sn is the cutting speed of the ends layer, T is the thickness of a single layer, and what we're going to do is we're going to estimate A and B. So note that so we use the recursive form here because we assume that uh, as the light or the laser uh, goes through the top layers, uh, there will be a specific portion of energy lost when the laser goes through all those layers because of the reflection, the, uh, the focus, and some residuals in the top layers. All right, now curve fitting. To perform the fitting, we have to collect data points. So we usually use this kind of pattern to do that. And in our experiment, we collect 27 points with different thickness. And we perform the curve fitting in our experiments. The average error of cutting speed is below 1%. And now, as soon as the curve fitting, we got these results. All right, and to get a power setting for cut and weld, acrylic stack with different numbers of layers, we basically query the original power table again, and we fill in the S, basically S0, and the T, the thickness over there, then we can recursively got S2, S3, uh, and et cetera. All right, finally, so we also did some uh, simple technical evaluation to evaluate the maximum height of stack uh, strength of welding and strength of healing. Uh, with our hardware, laser stacker can weld up to 24 millimeters. And usually when it go beyond 24 millimeter, the accumulated heat in the stack will result in some uh, undesired bubbles next to the cuts. Okay, now about the strength of the weld. So here we try to weld a 2.5 by 2.5 centimeter square cut uh, on, and weld that onto a plate. Then we start putting weights onto it. So uh, in this experiment, the weld is strong enough to hold more than 15 kilograms. And basically we just use up all the dummy weights we have. Okay, pretty strong. And about the strength of healing. So again, we cut, then heal a 2.5 by 2.5 centimeter square from the plate. Then we start adding weights onto it. Okay, and we keep repeating the process 10 times. And on average, this 2.5 by 2.5 centimeter square can support approximately a kilogram. Now when this one is put on, it's breaks over there. Okay. All right, so to conclude, we present the laser stacker, a system that fabricates stack 3D object on a laser cutter without manual assembly. And we use the uh, new cutting, welding, and healing process. So, of course, this project is not possible without our team, Stephanie, Anna, Luvi, Patrick. And we really had a lot of fun. It's a very great experience when we were both in HPI and we invite you to also join the team and talk to Professor Baldish over there. <laughs> All right, that's it, thanks for your time. We have time for questions. Hi, Sean Fulmer, uh, Stanford University. Really great work. I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about how thin the layers can possibly be. So for example, you can go up to 24 millimeters, but it looked like in the test they were all six millimeter or around sheets. Could you go, you know, have really thin sheets, like even 0.5 millimeters? Okay. So in our experiments, the thinnest one we got is one millimeter. Below that, when you do the heating, it will curve on its own. Then the stack process kind of doesn't work. So I would say one millimeter is the current minimum. Hi, Daniel Ashbrook, Rochester Institute of Technology. I'm curious. So uh, this technique pretty much applies to all the thermoplastics, especially something which could um, melt and bond back as you heat and cool it down. Do 
I'll, I'll take the one that works. Um, so I, I, oh, come on. <laughs> I have a question about uh, moving parts. You showed some moving parts to scissors. Um, what about gears? I mean, it seems like at a certain point, you, the pieces, the layers are going to get stuck, and you have to unstick the right ones, but without breaking the welds that you want. So can you expand on the flexibility of that? Right. So uh, the key underlying idea behind laser stacker is to uh, not have any manual assembly, right? And the user is not involved through any of the process, including like putting the layer, putting a sheet of acrylic through the, in the middle of the process. So when you make a set of gears, right, uh, the gears need to kind of be secured and not fall out. And so, so what this means is. Uh, you need to stop the process in between, get rid of the debris, and put another sh the sheet of acrylic after uh, the gears are cut. So it is kind of a uh, step further, uh, which which would slow down the process of fabrication, but you could still, you know, accomplish having mobile parts, and uh, and the process is still faster than any other, you know, like uh, stacking process with laser laser cutters. All right, I have, I have one last question, unless there's another question back there. S did you make stuff with multiple materials, and how well does that work? Yeah, uh, so, um, so one limitation of the system is uh, the materials should kind of be homogenous. They need to be similar. For, for, for example, um, two different acrylic sheets of two different colors might not work. So like, we d definitely played with a lot of materials, and uh, so uh, we stuck to using similar materials because that's easier to prove the concept.